Sean McCarthy. Welcome to this introduction to the Human Synergistic Circumplex. The Circumplex was originally developed by J. Clayton Lafferty, the founder of Human Synergistics, as a way of synthesising a number of theories and bodies of research around how people think and behave. Further research has been undertaken by Dr. Robert A. Cook, currently the uh, primary owner of Human Synergistics, and Rob, through his university contacts, uh, both Michigan and Illinois, over many, many years, has used the Circumplex to gather a vast amount of research that allows us to put some, some quite definite thinking around the implications for individuals, the implications for you, about how your thinking and behaviour impacts on your performance and your effectiveness as an individual. Firstly, I would like to describe how the Circumplex came about. There is a, a body of thought within psychology that focuses on how the individual human being thinks and the implications this thinking has for how people behave. <clears throat> There's a very important equation. It's called S plus T equals R. For many years in psychology, we worked with the SR paradigm, the S equals R. S stands for stimulus and R for response. So for many years, we saw the stimulus response model working. So if uh, you, you use stimulus response, for instance, when you train a dog. So if you don't want the dog to do what you don't want the dog to do inside, then you punish it when it does. So it very quickly associates pain or punishment or, or your dissatisfaction with that act and stops doing it. So that, that's like behaviourism. But a few years ago, somewhere around the 50s, 60s, people began to look at a slight mismatch between the stimulus and response. And in fact created this, this alternative paradigm, the S plus T equals R, where in between the stimulus and response, there is how the human being thinks about that stimulus. And when research was undertaken along the lines of that model, we discovered that in fact thinking has significant impact on the response, in fact more so than the stimulus. So what it tells us is it's not so much the stimulus, not so much what happens to you, that causes you to do things certain ways, but in fact how you think about what happens to you. So Clay in particular got very interested in this idea of the thinking. So if the thinking impacts on how you respond to people, how you respond to situations, the stimuli, then could we measure that thinking? Could we find a way of giving feedback to you that said, look, this is your thinking. Thinking can be functional and dysfunctional, can be helpful, it could be a barrier. So if we could give people some feedback on what thinking is actually helping them and what thinking is hindering them, then that's a very, very powerful process. So that led Clay to develop what we now call the human synergistic circumplex. The circumplex in psychometrics is a, a circular model that is designed to measure a number of variables that integrate to create a whole. So as we go through this program, we will be looking at each style in isolation. But in reality, to understand a profile, whether it's an individual's profile or a group's profile, you actually need to look at the totality of the profile. But our aim here is to give you some insights to the individual behaviours, and you yourself need to go through a thought process around how do they modify each other, how do they interact to create a whole. So this, we start, in effect, with a blank circle. And we need to put some structure to that circle. So we, we, again, go back to research. There's a, a significant amount of research on the relationship and difference between task-oriented behaviour and people-oriented behaviour. So we do things, we interact with people. So in constructing the circumplex, we use this right-hand side to measure task-oriented thinking and behaviour, and the left-hand side to measure people-oriented thinking and behaviour. So the first thing in looking at a profile, for instance, is it very task-oriented, or is it more people-oriented, or in fact, is it a balance between the two? The second body of research we went to in constructing the circumplex was the satisfaction versus security model. A lot of our behaviour is driven by the need to fulfil, let's say, higher order needs. So it's satisfaction needs. We did it for a challenge. Did it because it was fun. Those are higher order needs. There are also behaviours that we produce in order to keep ourselves safe. So these are security oriented needs. Why didn't you do that? Well, it threatened the hell out of me. So I avoided it. So we used the top half of the circumplex, 9 through 12 to 3, to measure satisfaction-seeking behaviour, and the bottom half of the circumplex, 3 through 6 to 9, to measure security-seeking behaviour. So we have this juxtaposition, if you like, a, a matrix that looks at the relationship between the orientation of the behaviour, is it task-oriented or people-oriented, 
And what sort of needs is it designed to fulfill? Is it fulfilling satisfaction needs or is it in fact fulfilling security needs? So that now allows us to place particular pieces of research and bodies of work within that circular profile. So I must make the point that this is other people's work. Human synergistics are applied scientists. We take other work and apply it. So we look around the literature. If we create a point here, for instance, this represents the most satisfaction-seeking part of the profile. It's in fact as far away from the security half as you can get. So we look around the literature to see where is there some work that's got good research behind it that describes a strongly satisfaction-seeking form of behaviour. And uh, many of you are familiar with Maslow's work. This, in fact, comes from his work, this concept of self-actualising, strong um, satisfaction-seeking behaviour, uh, motivated by the need for growth, etc. So that position self-actualising at that point in the profile, the most satisfaction-seeking. Then we look for something that can go down to the most security-seeking part of the profile. And here we have work by a chap called Harry Stack Sullivan on what he called the avoidance orientation. And the avoidance orientation is where we literally avoid risk in order to keep safe. So it's, if you like, the opposite of self-actualising, so the most security-seeking part of the profile. Then we look around the literature for the strongest people-oriented form of behaviour, and Carl Rogers did a considerable amount of work on what he called approval orientation. And approval orientation is when you have a strong need to be liked. I need your approval. It's very, very people-oriented, and therefore, by definition, has very little to do with the task. On the other hand, Rogers proposed an alternate behaviour, which he called competitive, which is the very task-oriented form of behaviour. I'm not concerned with getting on with you or being liked by you as an approval. I want to beat you. I want to prove to you that I'm better than you are. So we now have four anchors, and these anchors are very important, because they now define the shape of that circumplex. The strong satisfaction versus security seeking, and the strong people orientation versus the strong task orientation. And then we fill the gaps, essentially, because the other nature of a circumplex is that you have opposites opposite each other, but you have similarities alongside each other. So we look for a form of behaviour that is very satisfaction-seeking, but is now more people-oriented. And, and Roger's work on humanistic encouraging fits that rather nicely. We look for something that's similar to humanistic, but is overtones of approval orientation. Uh, David McClellan's work on Affiliation fits there extremely well, the affiliative style of thinking and behaving. We move down now into the security, so what we're looking for is something that's like approval, but more security oriented. So again, Stack Sullivan, the avoidance chap, his work around conventional thinking and behaviour, it has overtones of uh, approval orientation, but is even more security oriented still. When we move down here into dependency, we're looking at a style again that's similar to conventional, but with overtones of avoidance. And so uh, it's, it's actually a, a, a conglomerate of work, if you like, the dependency. It's uh, some of McClellan's work, it's some of Karen Horney's work, and again, there's contributions from Stack Sullivan in there. In terms of a form of behaviour that is, it, we know what the word dependent means. It has overtones of avoidance, it's strongly people security oriented, I will be dependent upon you. So we move across here, we look for a style of behaviour now that's very similar to avoidance, but now has task orientation to it. So Karen Horney's work on oppositional, around a need to find fault with, to feel safe by disagreeing with you, tends to fit that very well. Moving again, we're now looking for something that's even more task oriented. McClellan's work on power fits that extremely well. The strong need for control, the strong need for status, and the need to be in a dominant position. And we come right back to that anchor now in terms of the very, very strong task orientation. Moving up, it's task orientation, but with overtones now of uh, satisfaction, fulfilment. We get to Karen Horney's work around perfectionistic and perfectionism, which is a strong drive to do things, as it says, absolutely and utterly perfectly. So you can see the task orientation there. Moving forward to McClellan's work on achievement, which has overtones of perfectionistic, but also strong overtones of self-actualising. So as opposed to the, the, the perfectionistic stuff that lies at the 10 o'clock position there, 11 is about doing things extremely well and striving to perfect things as opposed to striving to do things perfectly. So that's why, for instance, you, know, you ask the question, why is oppositional at 7? Oppositional is at 7 because it's a very security-seeking form of behaviour and it tends to be task-oriented. So there's a very important reason as to why each of those styles is located in the circumplex where it is. Now, after many years of applied research around the circumplex and looking at the implications for effectiveness, 
at both the individual and group levels and of course also at the organisational level, we can now cluster those styles. So you'll see on the circumplex behind me that there are colour codings, that 11, 12, 1 and 2 are blue, and 3, 4, 5 and 6 are green, and 7, 8, 9 and 10 are red. Now 11, 12, 1 and 2, the achievement of self-actualising, humanistic and affiliative, combined to form what we call a constructive cluster. So these are behaviours that are associated with dealing with situations, dealing with people, so it's balanced, task and people, effectively, constructively. It's about dealing with an outcome, creating a constructive outcome through one's own thinking and behaviour. Three, four, five and six, the approval, conventional, dependent and avoidance styles on the other hand, are the passive defensive styles. They are ways of defending oneself but using passive strategies to do that. So you typically see passive defensive behaviour when if you're in front of a group uh, as a manager or a team leader and you have a, a, a rather tricky situation to deal with and you look to the group and you say, look, this is going to be an extremely difficult task to do but I need to call for volunteers. So would somebody like to volunteer to do this job? And at that point, if the group is very passive defensive, everybody falls in love with the carpet. That idea of if I don't get his eye contact, he won't choose me. That's passive defensive. It's like a scared rabbit in headlights. So you're trying to defend yourself, but it's actually using passive strategies to do so. And of course, the fact that I can't see your eyes doesn't mean to say I won't choose you. So it doesn't actually help you very much. So when we look at the passive defensive styles and relate that to performance, again, at the individual group or organisation levels, they actually correlate negatively with performance. They do not help. They in fact limit performance quite dramatically and from an organisational perspective for instance the more passive defensive in their profile the more likely they are to underperform. underperform. The aggressive defensive, the 7, 8, 9 and 10, oppositional power, competitive, perfectionistic on the other hand, are equally security oriented forms of behaviour. But this time now I'm using aggression to increase my sense of security. So if I have to do this I will do it myself, I will control it. So that's in order to increase my sense of security, but it's about an aggressive strategy now to feel secure as opposed to a passive defensive. So to summarise that, we have the, the constructive styles which are positively associated with effectiveness and performance, the passive defensive styles which are negatively correlated, and the aggressive defensive styles, funnily enough, have a, a, an intriguing correlation with performance. A lot of the red, a lot of the aggressive defensive actually will drive performance, but it drives it at a cost. And it drives it at a cost to the individual who's driving it, because there's a very, very strong correlation between high scores and the aggressive defensive styles and stress and health issues. It's just tiring, so it exhausts the body. The more the management style is aggressive in the organisation, the higher the staff turnover is going to be. So these are the costs. Yes, we had a great year, but hell, everybody left the company. So it's not about long-term effectiveness when we use that aggressive defensive, it's short-term, meeting the needs. If we strive for long-term sustainable performance as an individual, as a group or as an organisation, then there is simply no doubt that we must strive towards those constructive styles. So the objective in using these tools to give people feedback is essentially to aim for the blue, to get some feedback about where perhaps you could be more constructive where you could look to reducing some of those passive defensive and aggressive defensive styles and moving those through into more constructive ways of dealing with things. And that is our aim with this particular program, is to give you further insight to the styles that underpin the circumplex so that you can actually observe how this behaviour occurs. So for instance, when you watch the programs around the, the, the styles and groups, so we look at a constructive style, you look at how that constructive group meets. So the people that are in this sort of area here, in that meeting scene, you'll see that they are primarily concerned with the issues, that they are concerned with solving the problems. When you look at the passive defensive team meeting, it's like they dance around the edge of the issues all the time. Nobody will commit, there's no great involvement, there's no great engagement, they're just there to pass the time and tick the box. On the other hand, when you look at the aggressive defensive team meeting, that's all about me. It's all about ego involvement. It's all about how do I get what I want out of this. And so you can see the difference. The issues, dance around it and hope it will go away. And me, 
the ego involvement around it. And that's the reality of these styles. So as you look through the various styles one by one, I'm sure you'll see, if not yourself, then at least somebody you know coming back at you from those little scenes. And I trust you enjoy them very much. Thank you.